What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to create a base64 encryptor decryptor for Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to create this base64 encryptor decryptor. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off membership with all my courses, videos and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. And check it out. I just got the hardback version of my book in the mail the other day. Uh, I'd gotten the paperback earlier, but I hadn't got the hardback yet. So very cool. Uh, check that out if you haven't so far. So now we have the hardback version and the paperback version. Head over to Amazon.com. Just type in Elder Python or something like that it should pop right up if you're interested. And that's a lot of fun. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to create this encryptor decryptor tool for base 64. You can see we've got two buttons here. There's a bunch of gobbledygook in here. Now we click decrypt, boom, it says learn to code at codemy.com. We have a password down here, we can type in the thing if we try it again. Uh oh, incorrect password, try again. I want to come back here, type in the right password, encrypt this thing, boom, it switches back. So base 64 is a way to convert usually text into binary. And that's used for a lot of different things, but think like sending text messages over the internet. Sometimes you want to convert them into binary to shoot them out over the internet. It just works better. And then you encrypt and decrypt them on each end of the transmission of the text message or whatever. You can use this for all sorts of things. You could just use it as a fun little encryption tool. Now this is not hardcore encryption. We're just changing this into base 64. So it's not like super secure or anything. It's just, you know, a bunch of gobbledygook, basically binary. And that's cool. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the get bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kinter videos in this series, well over 200 other videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file called enc.py, short for encryption, call it whatever you want. It's just our basic Kinter starter code that we've always got. So the first thing we need to do is import base 64. And we're gonna use something called pi base 64. So let's go import pi base 64. Now we need to actually install this on our machine. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C GUI directory and let's just pip install pi base 64. And I've already got it. And it says, hey, you've already got it. If we wanna head over to the website really quickly, here it is, pypy.org slash project slash pi base 64. Just Google pi base 64, you'll find it. And you can see, you know, basic installation and usage instructions. So check that out if you want to look into this in more detail. There's a couple of extra things you can do in this that I'm not going to talk about in this video using, uh, for instance, URL safe encoding helpers and things like that. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to use the basic usage, but you can check that out if you're interested. So let's head over to our code and let's just very quickly knock out the GUI for this thing. So let's create a frame. I'm gonna call it my frame. It's gonna be a frame. We wanna put it in root. And let's my underscore frame dot pack this guy. I'm gonna give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. And inside of here, let's just put our buttons. So let's put an ENC button, short for encryption. And that's gonna be a button. We wanna put it in my underscore frame. We want the text to say uh, encrypt. And let's give this a font of something like Helvetica, like size 18. And let's give this a command of encrypt. And now we don't have this command yet, but we'll create it pretty soon here. So, okay, let's go enc underscore button dot grid. And we wanna give this a row of zero and a column of zero. So I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna do two more buttons, a decrypt button and a clear button. So I'll change this to decrypt. And we'll change this to say decrypt. And we'll put this in column one. And this will be the clear button. We'll say clear. And here it will say clear. And we'll put that in column two. And let's change this to the command of clear. And we'll change this to the command of decrypt. Okay, so very quickly, while I'm thinking about it, let's just create these functions. So the first one was clear, just pass for now. The other one was encrypt, pass for now. And finally, decrypt. And we'll pass for now. Okay, so now let's put it an ENC label on the screen. And this is going to be a label. We want to just put it in root. We don't want it in the frame itself. We want the text to say encrypt slash decrypt text dot dot dot. And if we want, we can give this a font of what say Helvetica 
and like maybe 14 to make it a little bit bigger. And then let's just ENC underscore label dot pack this guy. And we're gonna need another one below here. And this will be the password label. And here we'll say enter your password. So underneath this first label, we want a text box where we can type in the stuff that we wanna encrypt and decrypt. So I'm just gonna call this my underscore text. It's gonna be a text box. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a width of like 57 and a height of like 10. I've already played around with these to make it, you know, sort of the size I want. And let's my underscore text dot pack this guy. Give this a pad Y of like 10. Push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, then we've got this enter your password label underneath that. And then finally under that, we've got, let's create an entry box. And this is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a font of like Helvetica and size 18. And let's also give this thing a width of 35 or so. And we're good to go there. Now I also wanna type in show and then let's put a little star. This will make sure that whenever we type something in this entry box, the text doesn't appear, just a star appears because this is a password, so we don't want the password to appear. So, okay, let's my underscore entry dot pack and give this a pad Y of 10, push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so we did that very quickly. Let's save this and run it just to make sure this looks okay. Head back over to our terminal and let's run Python enc dot pi. When we do, okay, it looks good. These buttons are kind of smooshed together. We might give them some padding. So we've got some text there, that looks good. Okay, so let me fix these buttons real quick. Um, let's see, so in the, this guy, let's give this a pad X of like 20. That should space them all apart. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so now all we have to do is add the functionality to encrypt and decrypt these things. So let's head over here. First, let's clear this here. So we wanna clear the screen, so clear boxes. Let's go my underscore text dot delete. We want to delete from 1.0 to end. And then let's my underscore entry dot delete. We want to delete it from zero to end. That's how you delete things from text boxes and entry boxes. Save this and run it just to make sure that works. Type in some stuff, click clear. Okay, that looks good. So now we just need these two buttons. So let's come to the encryption. And first, I wanna grab what's in the text box because we're gonna delete it in a minute. So I'm gonna create a variable called secret and that's gonna be my underscore text dot get. We wanna get everything from 1.0 to the end of the text box, right? So let's get text from text box. Okay, so now we need some logic. So let's say logic for password. We need to determine whether or not the password we typed in is correct. So let's go if, and that's my underscore entry dot get, that will get whatever's in that box equals, and here we just set the password, set it to whatever you want right here. So I'm just gonna set my password to elder, All right? So here we can go pass, else, what do we wanna do? Well, let's pop up a little message box if they enter the wrong password. So let's come up here and let's go from tkinter, we wanna import message box. We know how to do that from past videos. So let's create a message box. Let's go message box dot, and let's go show warning. That will show a little warning box with a little exclamation point in it. And inside of there, we could go incorrect. And then the message we want to say incorrect, password, try again. There we go. And so, okay, let's say uh, flash a message if wrong password. Okay, so I wanna do the same thing here for the decrypt section. So let's just paste that in there. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that works. So here I'm not gonna type in any password. A, incorrect password, try again. We'll try the decrypt, same thing. If we type in elder, which is our password, that works and that works. We get no message boxes. Okay, so that seems okay. So now we need to convert whatever's in the text box, this thing right here, into base64. How do we do that? Well, it's a two-step process. First, we have to convert whatever we typed in into a byte. So text is usually ASCII, ASCII, but a byte is, you know, a byte. So we need to convert this ASCII text into a byte. So we can do that. So let's uh, convert to bytes. So let's go secret equals secret 
dot encode. And the encode function comes with Python. It will encode a thing into a byte. And what are we going to convert? We're going to convert an ASCII, an ASCII, right? So let's come down here and let's go my underscore text dot insert. We want to insert it at the end and let's insert that secret. And let's just see what this is. So before we do that, we want to come up here and let's go my, say clear the box. So let's go my underscore text dot delete from 1.0 to end because we've already put whatever's in the text box into this secret variable so we can delete whatever's in the text box so that down here when we spit out whatever's new, we'll see that. So let's look and see what this is creating by encoding this into a byte. Now, this won't actually show anything in the in the text box because the text box will convert something back to a back to text anyway. So if we want to actually see this, let's just print this out. So secret and we can see if we run this guy again, come over here and type in test, type in our password, click this. You see it doesn't change here, but if we close this, here is the converted thing to a byte. It just has a B in front of it, right? And it's in quotation marks and it has a slash in, which is a new line, line break. So, okay, not that interesting, but you know, at least we could see what's going on here. So we've converted it to a byte, basically. So now we want to convert to base 64. So let's go secret equals high base 64 dot B 64 encode. And what do we want to encode? We want to encode secret. This pi base 64 is what we're importing right here. So that's, that's that. So now we need to convert it back to ASCII so that it's at least, you know, in text format that we can read. So to do that, we just call secret again. And then right here, we encoded, we do the same thing, we're just going to go secret, but instead of encoding, we're going to decode, right? And what do we want to decode it to ASCII? Okay, so now we can print this to the screen, Let me just say, print to text box, and we're good to go. So let's run this guy. Let's type in john elder, type in our password down here. We want to encrypt this, boom, there we go. And that's it. So now we want to do the same thing. We just want to decrypt. So we can do that. It's actually super, super easy. In fact, I'm just going to copy all of this stuff. And let's come down to our decrypt function. And I'm just going to paste it in here. But let's see here, when we're converting to base 64, instead of encoding, we just want to decode, right? And right here, let's clear the screen. And let's just my underscore text dot delete from 1.0 to end. And actually, we could do it there, but I'm going to do it right here. Just so that this, uh, this stuff is all sorted together because it's all similar code. So okay, let's go ahead and save this. Try this guy again. So learn to code at codemy.com. Type in our password. Encrypt this guy. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Now we decrypt it, goes right back again. We clear the screen and I come up here and paste in that gobbledygook from earlier and then decrypt it. Again, it decrypts to learn to code at codemy.com. That's very cool. So again, this is not like super strong encryption, like secret stuff, you know, we're not using any RSA stuff or uh, things like that. We're just converting to base 64, which is basically converting it into binary. Like I said, it's great for like shooting messages across the internet. You don't want to send out text over the internet because it could get jumbled and there could be, you know, characters in there that throw errors for you. This way we're converting it into binary. You can shoot that text over the internet or you could just use it as a fun little, you know, sort of secret message creator. If somebody doesn't know that this is base 64, this stuff, if somebody just saw this, they wouldn't necessarily know that this was base 64. They might figure it out if they're a hacker, but normal people wouldn't. So that's a fun way to just sort of, you know, hide messages in plain sight if you wanted to. And uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.